Hi, everyone. Welcome to We Vote at Home, What's on Your Ballot 2021 Primary Edition. My name is Lauren Cristella. I am the Chief Program Officer at the Committee of 70. I'm also the President of the League of Women Voters of Philadelphia. And joining me today is Cassidy Martin. Cassidy, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Cassidy Martin. I'm a recent uh, graduate of the University of Pittsburgh Graduate School of Public and International Affairs. I've been following with Committee of 70 since January and moving to Philadelphia pretty soon. So almost what's on your ballot, not quite yet, but next time. All right, uh, next slide, Cassidy, thanks. So we're going to go through uh, everything you're going to see on your ballot on May 18th, elections rapidly approaching. Uh, we'll also give you some tips if you're still holding on to that mail-in ballot for how to complete it and submit it so that to make sure your vote counts and then what you'll need on election day too. So we'll go through the different offices. We're going to give you some phenomenal tools for learning all about the candidates and making your selections and then talk to you about how to cast that ballot in person or by mail or Dropbox. So before we really get started, I think the question a lot of people are asking, what do you mean there is an election? Why should I vote again? Didn't we just do this in November? And the answer is, of course, yes, but uh, the, yes, it mattered in November. It matters now. And you're eligible to vote. Eligible to vote. You registered to vote in November. Uh, and this, this vote counts just as much as that one did for different reasons. There's different offices on the ballot, and so many of them have such a big impact on our lives as Philadelphians and in Southeast PA. So some more reasons. Uh, one, because no one should have a say in your neighborhood and how your life in Philadelphia operates without you, uh, without you having a say, right? Uh, so you definitely want to pay attention to these offices, understand that they have a lot of power and exactly how they influence your life and the quality of your life here in Philadelphia. And then quite simply, uh, how Philly works depends on the people we put in charge of it. So if you want to improve our city, uh, you need to step up each and every election, two elections every year, uh, and our next one, May 18th. Just a little reminder, if anyone forgot, we are still voting amidst a pandemic. Uh, the city commissioners are providing all kinds of PPE, gloves, face masks, hand sanitizer will all be available. Uh, poll workers will be mandated to wear face masks. Um, voters cannot be turned away for not wearing a face mask, but you're strongly encouraged to do so. All polling places are inside, so keep that in mind. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so let's go through all the offices on your ballot. This, if you're voting in Philadelphia, these are the offices you're going to see on your ballot. Just a reminder, Pennsylvania is a closed primary state, so you need to be registered as either a Republican or a Democrat to see candidates and to have a chance to vote on the candidates on your ballot. If you're a registered independent, unaffiliated, third party, um, you're only going to be able to vote on those ballot questions, which we'll also go through. If you would like to change that, uh, the, I, we strongly suggest you join our coalition, our movement over at Open Primaries PA so that you can pick your party on election day and pick the, the slate of candidates you'd like to vote on. All right, first office on the ballot. Wait, I'm sorry, Lauren, I think, okay. Sorry, my computer's being a little slow. This is our first, <laughs> first no office. Problem. No problem. Uh, city controller. So in Philadelphia, our current city controller, Rebecca Reinhardt, is running uh, unopposed in the Democratic primary, and there's also no Republican challenger. There could, of course, be an independent or third party that presents themselves in the fall. But as of right now, it's looking like she's pretty much going to be the controller. Uh, the Committee of 70 has done a variety of interviews with different candidates for all different kinds of offices that you'll see on the ballot this uh, next week. And so I highly suggest you hop on over to our video section on this Facebook page and watch some of these videos. It's a great way to learn more about the candidates, what they stand for and what they hope to do in office. We did one with Rebecca Reinhardt uh, that you can find over there right now or after this presentation, just hold on. So, uh, 
district attorney of Philadelphia. The DAs, well, let me say one more thing about the controller's race. So yes, uh, Rebecca Reinhardt is running unopposed with an overwhelming amount of support, obviously, but it's not great for democracy to have uh, elections that are not competitive, right? So something to think about, there's a ton of good groups doing phenomenal work out there uh, from She Can Win, Ready to Run, all of these other organizations. So if you're at all interested in public service, uh, please consider being a candidate. It's a great way uh, to serve your city. Going over to District Attorney of Philadelphia. This is uh, a contested race. If any of you watched the debate a, a couple weeks ago, that was um, a really interesting and telling uh, choice that we'll have between two very different candidates on the, on the Democratic side. There's one Republican running, Chuck Bruto, we did an interview with him. You can also find over in our Studio C70 uh, videos on our Facebook page. But the Philadelphia DA's office is the largest prosecutor's office in Pennsylvania and one of the largest in the nation. Um, the DA also gets to hire 600 lawyers, detectives, and support staff. So it's an enormously powerful position. And they determine what crimes will be prosecuted and the severity of those charges. Uh, there are about you know, the vast majority, I think I saw 72% as of 2017 of the majority, that's the majority of the cases we see in Philadelphia are decided by a plea bargain. So they never even go before a judge. Uh, meaning that that DA's office has the power to, you know, basically to set the, the penalty and, and the severity of the crimes and charges. So uh, a lot to think about when making your picks for district attorney. Uh, we also include on, on your slide that you're seeing the salary information for each of these offices. And that's because uh, you should think of yourself as a voter as really the hiring manager, right? Your, each election is a job interview and you get, to, uh, you get to pick the candidate that you think is best for the job. So this job comes with $182,000 salary, uh, not insignificant. <laughs> All right. Um, going forward. Okay, so, so now we're going to dive into all of these judicial races. They, uh, let's, before we even get into who they are, what they do, what they're responsible for, why are we even electing judges anyway? The Committee of 70 joins the Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts in saying we really shouldn't. Ideally, uh, we would have merit-based selection. That's where uh, the governor or others uh, choose the best candidate to be a judge, right? The best person and they appoint them. So that is not how things currently work. So now we're, we're electing judges. Um, in a lot of these races, you know, this is gonna be a lower turnout election, unfortunately, but uh, it's a lower turnout election. And even of those people voting, only 20%, uh, or at least 20% don't pick judicial candidates. That's an even smaller number of people picking these really important jobs that have an impact on so many Philadelphians, right? The chances of coming before a court at some point in you know, a six or 10, ten year term of a, of a judge is pretty good. So some reminders, uh, judges set bail amounts and also uh, control the length of sentencing. So they can choose between throwing someone in jail for say a drug crime or recommending mental health and addiction support services instead, right? Um, so the values that these candidates are bringing to the job will have re very real life outcomes uh, for so many of, of our friends and neighbors. Uh, with over 40 million lawsuits filed every year, there's a chance someone you know may come before a judge. So just think about that, keep it in mind. And if you want to join the effort to move to merit-based election, head over to Pennsylvanians for Modern Courts to learn more about that issue. So uh, justices of the Supreme Court, uh, there's one vacancy for this court. This is the top court in the land in Pennsylvania. Uh, there are seven just justices on the court and they are elected to 10 year terms. So this is a big job. Uh, they, this court played a crucial role in declaring that the, uh, the maps by which we elect our representatives were gerrymandered and found unconstitutional, right? And demanded that new maps be drawn. 
Um, it's really powerful office. So pay attention to that one. And they're the final judgment in interpreting our laws uh, throughout Pennsylvania. Okay, next court up, judge of the Superior Court. Uh, the Superior Court of Pennsylvania is one of two statewide appellate courts. Uh, it is it reviews most of the civil and criminal cases that are appealed from the lower courts, like the Court of Common Pleas, right? Ours is the busiest in the country. It receives hundreds of thousands of filings a year. Uh, the court consists of 15 judges who are elected to statewide office and serve uh, 10 year terms. And there's one vacancy on this court. So when I say how many vacancies there are, that's how many uh, candidates you get to pick. There's gonna be multiple candidates. If there are multiple vacancies, you get to pick that many, um, that many people, but there's only one on this court. So you make one selection there. All right, next, Court of the Common Pleas. Uh, the Court of Common Pleas in Pennsylvania, these are the trial courts in the state. Uh, they hear civil cases that have um, a lot of controversy <laughs> and trials for serious crimes and uh, all of those involving families and children. So think of really contested uh, divorce proceedings, custody cases, things like that. Uh, there are, these courts, the Court of Common Pleas, are organized into 60 judicial districts across the, the state. Um, and these judges are elected to 10 year terms. It's just so, a long amount of time that we're, we're choosing here. Uh, in Philadelphia, our judges are citywide, right? So our district basically encompasses all of Philadelphia. And there are eight vacancies on this court. We have uh, had the opportunity to interview lots of candidates. There's so many people running for common pleas. Um, so definitely head over and see some of those interviews. You can get a great sense of who's running. Okay, judge of elections. This is a judge that's not really a judge at all. <laughs> this is one of the two poll worker positions on your ballot. Uh, in Pennsylvania, it's a wonky rule. We elect our poll workers, or at least three of the five that you'll see on, at your polling place. And the judge of election is like the boss of the polling place. They have the ultimate responsibility for the way the election goes in that polling place, opening, closing, all that good stuff. Um, so they are elected to four-year terms, and they will be very much so your neighbors. They'll, they'll come from your ward and division. Same with inspector of elections. They'll be from your ward and division. Uh, these are two positions, actually. So the top vote getter in the fall will be the majority inspector. The second, the person with the second most votes will be the minority inspector, and they'll serve four-year terms, too. All right, so heading into some ballot questions. Uh, there are four statewide ballot questions. So every Pennsylvanian will have the chance to, to vote on the top four. And then the last question is specific to Philadelphia. So let's go through these uh, really quickly. The first ballot question is about the governor's ability to declare a disaster emergency, right? So we, we're coming off of COVID times, hopefully. And uh, the General Assembly was really unhappy with the way the governor uh, wielded this power to declare emergencies. So their response to that was to come up with these uh, two ballot questions that would change our state constitution, constitutional amendments. Uh, this first one basically says that the governor, uh, the, you would just need a simple majority of the General Assembly to either extend or terminate the governor's emergency declaration. Right now, uh, you would need a two thirds vote, like a veto proof majority. So this is like lowering that threshold. And you can imagine 50% plus one person uh, is a lot easier to achieve and would probably not require, certainly not require uh, bipartisan support in the way that a two thirds majority would. Uh, so a no vote would oppose this constitutional amendment so that the governor would continue to be allowed to veto resolutions uh, that call for terminating an emergency declaration. And they would need that two thirds vote uh, to override his veto, his or her veto in the future. All right. Ballot question number two also deals with the emergency declaration power of the governor. And this would change our constitution to say that any a disaster emergency declaration would expire automatically after 21 days, regardless of the severity of the emergency, unless the General Assembly takes action to extend the disaster emergency. Uh, the governor 
would not be allowed to declare a new disaster emergency to respond uh, to, to whatever that situation is without uh, the General Assembly's uh, approval, basically. So a yes vote would support the constitutional amendment to limit the governor's emergency declaration to 21 days, uh, unless that legislature votes on a concurrent resolution to extend the order and, and provide that the state legislature should, should pass uh, laws related to how the disaster emergencies must be managed. Right, A no vote says things stay the way they are and the governor uh, can issue emergency declarations without a legislative vote after 21 days. Okay, the Committee of 70 has not taken positions on these amendments, um, but you can definitely find more information and more detailed information over on our website at 70.org. Uh, ballot question number three. This is like Pennsylvania's own version of the 14th Amendment, as, as best as I can tell. Um, so what it says, uh, the question is, shall the Pennsylvania Constitution be amended by adding a new section providing that the quality of rights under the law shall not be denied or abridged because of an individual's race or ethnicity? Okay, so a yes vote supports adding that language to our state constitution that would prohibit that denial or curtailing of rights because of someone's race or ethnicity. And a no vote opposes adding that language, right? Keep things as they are. Next slide. Ballot question number four. Um, this is the, the very long plain English uh, explanation and long uh, text of the actual question. But basically, it, there's a pot of money available in the state to, that's available. It makes loans to volunteer fire companies and volunteer like ambulance uh, companies. This would change that to also allow municipal fire companies and emergency medical services to apply for those loans. It doesn't promise them money. Um, it also doesn't give more money to that fund should more people be eligible to apply for it or more organizations. Um, so a yes vote would allow fire departments, municipal fire departments to apply for loans from that state program. And a no vote would prevent the fire departments uh, from applying for loans from that state program. Okay, uh, question number five. Uh, this is a change. This is proposing a change to Philadelphia's Home Rule char Charter. That's like our city's constitution or operating manual. Uh, and the, the question here is, shall our Home Rule Charter be amended to provide for an expanded board of license and inspection review that can hear and decide cases in three member panels? Um, so my understanding is that there is a backlog of, of decisions to be made. And currently, they need a majority of the board of license and license and inspection to decide these cases. And if they were able to expand uh, the, the number of people on that board, they would then, the board chair would be able to designate groups of three to hear cases, which would move this process uh, a bit more quickly. So kind of get rid of that backlog. And a no vote would keep the system as it is, consisting of six members, the majority of whom must participate in order to hear any case. All right. Okay, so we went through all of the offices and everything you'll see on your ballot to find the specific candidates that you'll see to be connected with their social media sites, see answers to the survey questions we pose to them, um, check out their website and learn all about them. You can go over to B uh, our BYO ballot, bring your own ballot tool, ballot.70.org. I use this, I send it to friends and family. Uh, to show them how I was thinking about the candidates that we'll see in Philadelphia. And you can also save your picks. You can share them. You can share them to social media. You can email them. You can just save them to your phone. Uh, you can also find where your polling place is right from this handy little website. Uh, and I thought it was a phenomenal tool in helping to learn all about the different candidates for these judicial races, for sure. So again, cannot say enough good things, ballot.70.org. Uh, check it out, bring it with you on election day. You don't need that sample ballot that, that someone tries to hand you at the polling place because you'll have your own based on your values and your decisions after doing a little bit of research on each of the candidates. BYO ballot. Just we can sit on that a little bit, that's fine. <laughs>
I like see it loading and then it doesn't actually go. Yeah, totally okay. Fine. okay, so this is just some tips. If you haven't yet filled out your BYO ballot, like my husband, who I'm going to shake if he doesn't do it tonight, um, you have to use blue or black ink, fill out both sides of the ballot. There are offices on both sides, don't forget. Um, no cross outs or erasures. So you definitely want to take your time and make sure you're, you're picking all the people you want to pick. Um, and don't forget to use the secrecy envelope. This year it is blue, or at least mine was. Uh, so you still have to use that envelope. You put your ballot in the secrecy envelope and then that whole envelope goes into the mailing envelope. Um, I would get that in the mail today if you were planning to use the post office. The mail has still been a little bit delayed, so it has to arrive at the county's office by 8 p.m. on May 18th. So if you wait any longer, I would definitely suggest finding a drop box. Uh, each of the counties, Philadelphia and the surrounding counties, have a bunch of options for that. You can head over to our website to be connected with each of your counties uh, options for dropping off your ballot. I think we're all used to scantrons and things like that by this point, but make sure you're voting for one when it says one, voting for more when you can vote for more and make sure you fill in that bubble completely. Don't forget the secrecy envelope. Your vote will not count if you forget the envelope. So no naked ballots. Uh, make sure you use that this time blue secrecy envelope. This was a, an actual voter that I met in the fall, right outside of City Hall. Her dog actually ate her ballot. So she was there to get a new one. Um, this breaks down what you can do by date. We're obviously, we're past May 11th. So right now you can go to City Hall uh, to request a replacement ballot. So if, if something like that happened, you can get your new ballot. And you can also drop off your ballot there until May 18th. And that goes for, for each of the county offices. Um, Philadelphia has set up a number of drop boxes. I know that each of the other counties have as well. All right. So if you want to do more, Philadelphia still needs poll workers. Um, we, we need them every election and would certainly appreciate if you were interested in signing up, you can sign up at votespa.com or philadelphiavotes.com. We're also gonna be managing a backup poll worker program. So you can be on call the morning of election day, hang out with me and Cassidy in a Zoom room, and we'll wait to hear from the city about where they need to deploy poll workers or where they might be short staffed, and then you would respond and get placed. Uh, you would get paid like any other poll worker to do uh, if you were actually placed at a polling place on election day. So if you're interested in doing that, uh, you can in, in email bettergov at 70.org and we'll make sure we get to the right place. Um, again, if you think it's crazy that only Republicans and Democrats can vote on candidates in this election, uh, learn more about the effort to open our primaries at openprimariespa.org. And you can click through. And here's where you can find us. So if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to, to find us on all of these places. We're sharing lots of good information everywhere uh, on our website, on our social media feeds, and we're happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have either on those platforms or to our email at bettergov at 70.org. Uh, thank you, Cassidy, for for controlling all of that. Uh, if you have uh, additional questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. I'm happy to respond to things there. And otherwise, uh, thanks for joining us. Please feel free to share this ahead of election day, May 18th and happy voting. Thanks so much.